Oh, 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 it's so cold. <laughs> oh, it's so cold. Welcome to Dead Horse, Alaska, a remote outpost nestled on the north slope, just a stone's throw from the Arctic Ocean. This isn't your typical Alaskan town. Dead Horse exists primarily to serve the oil industry in Prudhoe Bay, a vital hub for one of the world's largest oil fields. But this stark, windswept place has a history all its own, blending the ruggedness of the Arctic wilderness with the bustling energy of an industrial life. Dead Horse isn't a typical community. Unlike many remote Alaskan towns, Dead Horse doesn't have a significant civilian population. The local non-slope civilian population is less than 15 souls. Instead, it's a transient place populated by thousands of oil field workers who come here on rotation, often spending two to four weeks living in hotels on site before heading home for their off time. The jobs here are largely tied to the oil industry, including drilling, logistics, and maintenance. It's a demanding environment with workers enduring extreme weather and isolation, but the pay is often a strong incentive. The town itself is more of a sprawling industrial camp, dotted with modular buildings, heavy machinery, and utilitarian structures designed to withstand the Arctic conditions. In the summer, temperatures hover just above freezing, while winter brings bone-chilling cold, often plunging well below zero with fierce winds. We enjoyed unseasonable temperatures in the mid-70s when we arrived in Dead Horse, but snow fell several days after we left town. The weather here is brutal but it's all part of life in Dead Horse, Alaska. As a crucial hub for the oil industry in Alaska, Dead Horse plays a key role in America's energy supply. The nearby oil field, discovered in 1968, remains one of the largest in North America. The oil extracted here travels through the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, a marvel of engineering that stretches 800 miles to Valdez, the northernmost ice-free port in the United States. Despite its industrial focus, Dead Horse also has cultural significance. The land is part of the traditional territory of the Nupiaq people, who have lived in Alaska's Arctic for thousands of years. While Dead Horse itself is primarily an oil town, the surrounding region is rich in indigenous heritage with the deep connections to land, wildlife, and sea. Visitors to Dead Horse often come with a specific goal in mind. Some are here for work, while others are drawn by the challenge of reaching this remote outpost. The allure of exploring Alaska's North Slope, crossing into the Arctic Circle, or simply experiencing life on the edge of civilization attracts a steady stream of intrepid travelers. I can hear you. Your question. You're asking, what's there to do in Dead Horse, beyond work? I can answer, there isn't fuck all to do. For the few tourists who do make it this far, this experience is more about the journey than the destination. The drive along the Dalton Highway offers incredible opportunities for wildlife spotting, including caribou, musk oxen, which we never saw, and perhaps even a grizzly bear or two, which we did see. We're at Napa, and the general store, Brooks General Store, in Dead Horse, Alaska. End of the Dalton Highway. Um, pretty much the end of everything. <laughs> so inside this building is a Napa store, a general store. Across the way there is a hotel. There are three hotels, I think, in town, plus some other camps. And all hotels are actually camps.
So this is a worker town. This is not a tourist town. We're on the North Slope, it's what they refer to it as. Um, oil fields, so it's all oil field workers and businesses that support the oil field. Oil field. So it's a little bit different than the ones in Texas and Louisiana that we're used to seeing. All the buildings are built on stilts, which is similar to Louisiana, but down there it's because of um, flooding. Up here it's because of permafrost. So all of the buildings could get lifted and moved if they need to. Um, this Right here you can't see it, but even right over there you can see that this building is on pylons. So, all about the permafrost here. In the summer, the midnight sun bathes the tundra in a surreal golden light, making for unique photo opportunities. For us, it also made for many sleepless nights, getting sunlight in our eyeballs at 3 a.m. Winters, on the other hand, are dominated by the polar night, where the sun doesn't rise for weeks. If you're lucky, you might catch a glimpse of the northern lights dancing across the sky, a mesmerizing display that adds a touch of magic to the Arctic night. The types of jobs available in Dead Horse are as varied as they are specialized. You'll find positions in drilling, construction, pipeline maintenance, and environmental safety. There's also a need for logistical support, with jobs in transportation, equipment operation, and supply chain management. Many of these roles require technical skills and certifications, from operating heavy machinery to understanding complex drilling technologies. The workforce in Dead Horse often operates on a rotational basis, with employees typically working two to four weeks on site before returning home for an equal period of rest. This rotation is necessary due to the harsh and isolated environment where long hours and extreme conditions can take a toll. However, the compensation is often very competitive, attracting skilled workers from across the country. Getting to and from Dead Horse is another unique aspect of life on the North Slope. The town is so remote that most workers arrive by flight, flying in from Anchorage or Fairbanks. The airport, located just outside of Dead Horse, is the main gateway to the area, with daily flights accommodating the constant movement of personnel. This reliance on air travel underscores the isolation and logistical challenges of working in such a remote location. The skills required to work in Dead Horse are as demanding as the environment itself. Many jobs require certifications in fields like petroleum engineering, geology, or environmental science. There's also a strong need for skilled tradespeople, like welders, electricians, and mechanics, who are vital to keeping the equipment running smoothly in the extreme cold. In addition to technical skills, workers need to be adaptable, resilient, and prepared to handle the physical and mental challenges of life on the North Slope. Working in the oil fields of Dead Horse, Alaska isn't for everyone, but for those who take on the challenge, it's a career like no other. Here, you're not just working a job, you're part of a critical industry that helps fuel the world, all while living and working in one of the most extreme environments on Earth. Whether you're drawn by the adventure, the opportunity, or the chance to be part of something big, the oil fields of Dead Horse offer a unique and rewarding experience. We're at the Aurora <laughs> Camp Hotel and we're gonna go in and eat lunch. There's not a lot of places to eat here. Mosquitoes are insane. Um, Plug-ins for the winter. Plug-in people's trucks so that they don't freeze while they're inside. So, let's go eat lunch. 
When it comes to food, options in Dead Horse are utilitarian but satisfying. Hotel dining rooms serve up hearty buffet-style meals designed to fuel workers through their shifts. It's not gourmet dining, but the portions are generous and the atmosphere is friendly. It's a welcome break from the harsh environment outside. We loved eating with the local slope workers and talking with them about their work lives. The conversations we have with the slope workers were a highlight of our time in Dead Horse. We paid roughly $20 for lunch and maybe $23 for dinner per person. We're at the Arctic Ocean, baby. Sticking my feet in. How about you, Steve? No. <laughs> it's about 46 degrees. I'm going to record you sticking your feet in. <laughs> Not last so long. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, that's cool. Oh, there's a little kid, so I'm trying not to cuss. Try again. Okay, I'll try again. You can do it. Oh, it's a clam. Oh. Well, it's empty. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> oh. That's it? Oh. That's like a brain freeze on steroids. I just want to show you how shallow it is, you know? Oh, no. oh. oh don't do it. <laughs> oh. Bug be young. Come on in, the water's fine. <laughs> I said no. I said no.